Welcome back to the course on aggressive processing for music applications. In the previous uh, theory lecture, we started talking about sound transformations, in particular about how to use the short time Fourier transform and the sinusoidal model to manipulate uh, sounds. In this uh, second uh, theory lecture, I want to continue that and talk about the harmonic plus residual model and how it can be used for transforming the frequencies of the harmonics and then the harmonic plus stochastic model and how can it be used for time stretching and morphing operations. This morphing by the way is quite different from the one that uh, was possible with the short time Fourier transform and of course these are just some example uh, operations, example transformations uh, but the, the number of uh, possible usages of these models is uh, much larger. Let's start with the harmonic plus residual model. This is the block diagram that uh, we have seen before in which uh, from the input sound we analyze the spectrum, find the peaks, and then find the fundamental frequency, find the harmonics and we subtract uh, those harmonics from the original signal we need to compute uh, the, the spectrum of the original signal again in order to develop a spectrum from which we can subtract these harmonics in a proper way. Okay, and then where we do the transformations is in the frequencies and amplitudes of the harmonics. We don't apply any transformations to the residual. Uh, in order to, to apply transformations to the residual it makes sense to have a model for it and that's what we're going to be introducing uh, in the next uh, model, the harmonic plus stochastic model. And here uh, the transformations on the harmonics, again like in the sinusoidal model, it's applied only on the frequency and amplitudes. The phase are forgotten, we don't use them, we will be resynthesizing them again after transformation. And uh, the main issue uh, of that is because the phases are very sensitive to transformations and it's very difficult to handle them. So it's better to just regenerate them after transformations and it doesn't sound that bad. Anyway, so after the transformations we can sum these new harmonics to the residual signal and this residual signal, since it does not include any deterministic, any harmonic information, it will merge quite nicely and then we will create a sound that has the same residual than the original and the harmonics will be modified. In terms of types of transformations that can be done to these uh, harmonics, to the, the frequency of these harmonics, there are many. And here I, I, I explain three common ones. The most traditional one is to just transpose all the frequencies by uh, a given uh, factor. So we multiply all the harmonics by a scaling frequency factor. So that uh, would, uh, would correspond to a transposition. So if you, if you multiply by two, it would correspond to uh, uh, converting the sound to an octave higher. If we multiply by 0.5, it would be an octave lower. Okay, then we can, instead of multiplying, we can just shift all the frequencies. For example, we can sum a factor to all the frequencies. So we'll be shifting all the harmonics by an additive uh, component. And finally, the last one I want to mention is uh, what is called frequency stretching, in which we are applying a frequency change that is dependent on the harmonic. So here what we are doing is basically dividing every harmonic by its harmonic number, so we basically get a frequency around the fundamental, and then we multiply by the harmonic number to the power of a scaling factor. Therefore, the, the, the higher uh, harmonics will be modified very differently from the lower harmonics. It, it's very much uh, the harmonic dependent and that can create some nice effects uh, that we will see. So this is a, a, a plot of these uh, three transformations that e exemplify uh, these uh, operations quite nicely. So on the top left, we have the original harmonics all uh, located at, uh, at uh, the harmonic number location, the 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Then if we transpose by 2 on the right, it's just simply multiplying every by 2, so 
uh, uh, harmonic one will be in position two, harmonic two in position four, etc. We are maintaining a harmonic spectrum. We're just transposing by a factor of two. If we shift instead by a given value, in this case, since we are uh, having uh, the frequencies normalized to, uh, to uh, integer values, here by 0.5 will be uh, basically shifting by half of the frequency of the first uh, uh, fundamental of the first harmonic and in here we see that we're shifting everything by a constant value so from uh, now after this transformation we do not have any more a harmonic series because the first harmonic is not uh, just the fundamental frequency anymore Okay, so we have now a series of values that are equally spaced, but they are uh, multiples of another frequency. So the sound may be uh, quite a bit uh, different and quite interesting in some cases. And finally, the frequency stretching operation, uh, it's a quite different operation. Now it changes the, uh, the distance between the harmonics and it, it likes, it's like an accordion. You know? So if it's here 1.3, means that, well, the first uh, uh, value, the fundamental, will not be touched. The first one will be um, stretched by a factor of 1.3, and then these are going to be powers of these. So as we go higher up, it's going to go, uh, sort of, uh, the distance will increase uh, kind of exponentially. And this uh, creates, again, uh, quite very interesting effects. So let's uh, listen to a sound in which we have applied some stretch uh, and transpose uh, kind of um, uh, uh, transformation. Uh, so let's listen. So it's a, it's a flute sound that we can listen to. Okay, it's an A4 and below that we see the harmonics that have been identified on top of the residual spectrum of the original uh, of signal. And then what we are doing is leaving the residual as it is, so the background spectrogram is exactly the same than the top one, and we're just modifying the harmonics. So if you look here, the harmonics have been heavily modified, and if uh, you see they have been stretched and at the same time transposed uh, a little bit. So let's listen to the, the modified sound. Okay, of course, quite different. And if you pay attention, the residual is there, and since the residual is basically this breath noise, is, uh, it merges also quite well with these uh, transpose harmonics. Okay, let's go to the other model, the harmonic plus stochastic model, and it's very similar to the previous one, and now the transformation is applied both in the modeling of the residual signal and, of course, in the harmonic components. So we have a stochastic approximation and therefore we can transform that quite easily because it's a model that has simplified the, the residual quite a bit and is quite flexible in terms of manipulations. And then of course after transformation we obtain the stochastic component and uh, we obtain the frequency amplitudes of the, and phases of the harmonic sinusoids and we can synthesize uh, the two and summing uh, together. Um, so in terms of what is actually done is very similar to what we presented for the sinusoidal model. Now what we are introducing is the transformations on the stochastic component in a similar way. So the frequencies of the harmonics uh, can be scaled by a factor and the time of the reading of this uh, uh, frequency values also can be changed in order to obtain this time scaling um, uh, operation. So we have this uh, scaling uh, function. The amplitude is uh, the same way and the stochastic component is handled in the same way. Okay? And of course the phases are generated and uh, they are generated by starting from an initial phase and then adding the, um, the, the frequency of every harmonic that we are, want to generate to that phase, so we can generate the instantaneous phase uh, that way. Okay, let's, uh, let's show an example of that. Uh, this is the sax phrase that uh, we are also, also we have uh, heard before. Let's listen to that again. 
Okay, and then uh, we have the, the analysis of it, where uh, we have uh, analyzed the harmonics and the stochastic component. And then we can um, change that. In this uh, particular case, we have done time scaling. So we have changed the timing, and now with the residual approximated with the stochastic, it's very easy to do time scaling of the stochastic and the harmonics. And, uh, and that's it. We have just focused on the time scaling uh, transformation in this particular example. Let's listen to that a very simple time scaling operation. So basically the only thing we have done is we have compressed the first part of the signal by quite a bit. Uh, in fact, it's like half of the duration. And the second half has been uh, extended by twice as much. So in fact, the overall duration of the sound uh, remains the same. And of course, as you can imagine, this is very flexible and we can do a lot of uh, envelopes that uh, we can play around with. Okay, now uh, let's talk about the morphing using this uh, harmonic plus stochastic uh, model. Okay, uh, here we have simplified the block diagram. We have two sounds, X1 and X2. Now they are basically at the same level. And basically what we're going to do is interpolate the two representations. So from X1 we obtain the frequencies and amplitudes of the harmonics and the stochastic approximation of the residual. And of uh, sound 2 we do the same thing. And then what we are doing is interpolating these two set of functions. We are interpolating the frequencies, the magnitudes of the harmonics, and we are interpolating the stochastic uh, uh, envelopes of the, of the residual. And then, of course, we can synthesize uh, back uh, the, the output sound by uh, generating the stochastic uh, component and the sinusoidal component. Let's look at a particular frame uh, of uh, a sound in which we have applied like a 50% interpolation. So on top left is the uh, X1, one particular frame, the harmonics uh, visualize as uh, the, the location is the frequency and the height is the amplitude. Okay, and then the blue one is uh, a sound one, X2, uh, the red one is a sound two. Okay, and then we can interpolate these two, basically harmonic by harmonic, we can interpolate. And as you see, the X2, the, it's a different frequency. It's a sound that has a higher pitch. So the interpolated result has a pitch which is in between the two and has a shape, again, that is in between the two. Okay? So it's basically a 50% interpolation between the two set of values. And the stochastic component below is, does the same idea. So on X1, this uh, shape is the approximation of the residual. So it's very few. The, the crosses is where we actually have values, has an envelope. And then X2 is another envelope for X2. Uh, and the output is the interpolated envelope. So it's a shape that is in between these two shapes. Okay, let's uh, uh, use that in a particular example in which we start from a violin sound and we're going to interpolate it progressively towards a soprano sound. So here we see on the top the violin sound that we can listen to. Okay, and it's analyzed, so we see the harmonics. Uh, well, we see, I think here is the first uh, like 40 harmonics and then the stochastic component of that. And then we see below the uh, analysis of uh, the soprano sound. Let's listen to this. Okay, where we see again the harmonics. It's a high, higher pitch and the stochastic component uh, in the background. And now we can choose the interpolation values to go from one set of values to the other. So it will progressively go from one sound to the other. Let's listen to the result. Of course, since one, the, uh, the soprano sound is higher than the violin, we hear uh, this uh, glissandi, but at the same time, we hear the evolution of the timbre, 
uh, and every single parameter is slowly changing from one to another. Again, the possible type of functions to control these uh, interpolations is, uh, is uh, enormous, so we can play around quite a bit with these ideas. And that's all. Uh, so again, uh, Wikipedia, there is not much, and there is not much uh, that uh, we can uh, refer to in terms of trying to understand some of these uh, transformation aspects. And in fact, a lot of these things is just by trying. Uh, so I would uh, encourage you to uh, try these things and, uh, and develop your own intuition of what it works and what it doesn't. And that's all. Uh, so this uh, has been the second theory lecture on sound transformations. Of course, in this week, what is important is the, the programming and the demonstration classes even more than the theory lectures, because after all, it's a very applied topic and it has to be grasped uh, from uh, an application and from an, uh, an intuition and musical perspective. So thank you very much for your attention and I see you in the next lecture. Bye-bye.